My name is Daniel, and I play in a band called Velvet Loom from Corona, California. I grew up in the Inland Empire. I lived in Riverside for uh, most of my life, actually. I'd say for, uh, I think, like up until I was like 12 or 13. And then uh, we moved over here to Corona. When I was first playing guitar, I was listening to a lot of like Nirvana, a lot of like grunge stuff, um, because those songs were a lot easier to play. Um, they didn't rely on a lot, a lot of just power chords and stuff and distortion or whatever you, you pretty much had. The first two pedals I bought were these two. And funny enough, it's the two pedals. It's like the pairing that they call it, like Kurt Cobain's pairing, because it's just distortion and, uh, and chorus. It's a DS1 and a small clone. I bought those two when I was first starting to play guitar. And I remember the guy even looked at me and he's like, you're trying to sound like Kurt Cobain, huh? And I was like, all right, just sell me the thing. <laughs> like, sell me the pedals, damn it. I started playing music when I first started getting piano lessons, I think when I was around like 10 or 11, and I got piano lessons for like three years, hated it, and then I went and just switched over to guitar because that was the next best thing in my eyes. Honestly, I love piano like more than anything now, so it's kind of it's kind of funny, yeah. When I was learning guitar, I had, a, I had two teachers, um, and they were both Brazilian. They were studying abroad whenever they were over here. Uh, so I would pretty much uh, get whatever tips, tricks that they had like when they were here. I'd say that I'm influenced by Bossa Nova mainly through my family. Um, my mom put me on to a, an artist, I'd say like back when I was first on piano. She put me on to Deja Vin and João Gilberto and just like classic Brazilian artists and I started picking them up. and learning some of their songs and like um, I'd, I'd pick up like some chords and stuff and then I'd be able to maybe write a song of my own with those chords. So um, a lot, a lot of influence from, from Bossa Nova in general. Yeah. I'd say I do come from a music family, but I'd say it's more of a church music family than a just regular music family, if anything. Um, very, my parents are very heavy on melody and everything like that. And they've always kind of like sang together whenever it was worship time or whatever. My dad um, has always had a, a nylon string guitar around to play and my mom would kind of sing with him. So I'd say I had quite a big influence by them, yeah. Just, just through songs. During the week, um, when I'm not making music, I am working with my dad, who's a general contractor. But when I was like 10 or 11, as soon as I could pretty much start sweeping, he got me like along there. I work with him during the week pretty much fixing up like bathrooms, kitchens, remodeling like anything and everything you could think of in the house. I think the main influence when it came to making my own music and recording it was just seeing the people that were doing it at the time um, when I was paying attention a lot more to music. I think seeing people my age or people that didn't have as much as a professional studio, um, just seeing them do what they could do kind of just influenced me to want to do what I do. One person starting out that influenced me was definitely like Chris in Sundiver. I remember I was kind of just like DMing him when I was trying to pick up some shows. Pretty much any, any other bands I play with, I'd say Tetra Collective in Long Beach, um, Salenbury as well, they kind of picked me up and uh, helped me play some shows actually. So I was playing a lot of house shows and yeah, just a, a community of people kind of came together slowly and I started getting more involved and they kind of just like helped put me on. So the processor recording, uh, the BIS uh, in the pandemic was just, uh, mainly just recording, uh, sweating our asses off in Justin's room, uh, doing as many takes until we were happy with what we got, really. It was, uh, it was mainly all live. Besides that, it was like overdub and vocals and stuff. Luca wrote like some really good parts off of the abyss. Justin did a lot of the drums. Drago wrote a, a solo on Vasa actually, so it's as much of a collaborative effort, if anything, when it comes to actual music. 
Yeah, we mainly recorded it all in Justin's room. And then also at a studio in LA uh, with my audio engineer, Ricky. Um, I, I did the vocals there. I've had the songs pretty much written for like years and I've kind of sat with them to see where they were gonna go. So I knew when it was right pretty much. And yeah, that's the, around the time of the pandemic is when everyone had like the time to be at home and everything. So I said, well, like, now it's the time to do it. So we kind of got together and started jamming and rehearsing and then it came out. Yeah. Should I clap? We're Velvet Loon. Uh, this is the Abyss.
Uh, this is a song that I wrote with my dad, and it's in Portuguese. It's called Vasa. <laughs> song is the first song I ever released um, and uh, we we changed it uh, like a lot um, once I started playing with like this group pretty much these these fellows this is Chagu on bass we got Justin on drums we got Big Luca on the keys and we got Will on sax and my name's Danny <laughs> Uh 
I'd say what influences me to make music, even though I'm not getting paid with it, is I think just as much as like I love playing, I think I just love listening. And I think, I've, well, everyone starts listening first. So um, I think I was just always an admirer of very specific like artists. And I kind of just, um, I've just always appreciated just seeing what someone can do, like really. So, um, yeah, I'd say that.